Radio Raw here with Buddy McGirt, the legend himself. Uh, you know, no new stages for you in this business. You've been everywhere all the time. <laughs> What's it like being in the corner at the O2 Arena? I've been here before. I mean, I got to honestly say that here in the UK, the boxer fans are great. No matter where it's at, whether it's in the O2 Arena or across the street in the park, the fans here, the electricity in the air, even if it's a small crowd, is great. And the support that they have for their fighters is even greater. Well, at the moment, you're on the Zizo World Tour. Your last stop was Saudi. Again, your fighter is in tough, got up off the canvas, finished the fight, won the fight. What was it like to have such a young fighter have to face that kind of adversity early in his career? Well, you know, um, I, and you know, it's, uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it teaches him. A bad thing, of course, because he got knocked down. But it was a learning experience for him. And uh, when he came back to the corner, that's when he was settled down. Before that, he was hype, you know what I mean? But when he dropped and I saw his butt, his butt cheeks, I was like, <laughs> I thought he was smelling the canvas. I'm like, what the hell is going on there? But when he got up and came back to the corner, then he calmed down. Then he understood, you know, hey, I got I to gotta take this one step at a time. I like to say the sport of boxing is the oldest one in the world. Everybody was born with two fists and right. knew how to fight. As this generation of fighter, you're still at the forefront of the sport. Different from your generation when you came up in the sport? Oh, without a doubt, man. It's, it's, I could go on all day how different it is. Man, I'm not going to go there, but it's, <laughs> it's very different. It's very different. Well, give us the, what's the good spin on how, how it's different? Well, I mean, it's like this. When I was fighting, we, we could fight twice a month. I mean, whether you was a championship fight, a 10-round fight, we wanted to stay, we stayed busy. Guys said, hey, you're lucky if you get any champion to fight more than three times a year. Zizo's just fought like a month ago. It's only been a month. He's back on the big stage. How busy do you want to keep him every year? Well, I was hoping he fights in May, but he wants to finish Ramadan. But I was hoping in May we go again. You know, this is a learning process. And in this sport, you know, you got to... You got to, uh, how can I put it? You got to sacrifice everything in this sport. Mm. To be successful, you got to sacrifice. You know what I mean? You got you to gotta be in there. Like, I, if it was up to me, I'll have him in the gym on Monday. But, you know, he's going to go do finish Ramadan with his mom, so I can't argue with that. I'm not going to win that argument. So, uh, you know what I mean? If he was going to go spend with anybody else, I'd be like, no. But it's his mom, so I got to respect that. But, you know, I told him while he's home, there's things he's got to work on. I mean, it's never, it's, you, you never stop learning in this game. You talk about the learning experience. Uh, you know, we talked about him getting off, off the canvas and dealing with a real aggressive, offensive-minded fighter. Tonight, the guy was very defensive-minded, you know, tucked up, looking, picking his shots. How is it different when Zizo gets back to the corner in a fight like tonight? Well, you, you know, um, when I, once I seen that the guy was in a survival mode, I just said, well, look, let's not let the guy get any confidence. Let's keep him in survival mode. It might look ugly. No, I don't care. Let's keep in survival mode and get the win. And then we put that another feather in our cap or something we got to work on. And let me turn your attention to the action on the stage tonight. You know, on the main event, we got Anthony Joshua making a comeback where he made a debut here uh, at, at the beginning of his career. How do you see his new dawn and the next chapter of his career? Well, no, honestly, I think he should stop this guy in about four rounds. My personal opinion. I think he should stop, stop Franklin. You give Franklin any chance? If Franklin were to make this a distance fight or even win it, what would he have to do? If Franklin, for Franklin to win the fight, if I had him, I would have him go right out round one and jump right on Joshua. Hmm. Make him, you know, go back to the old Joshua. You know, don't let him get settled in with the new stuff he learned and let him get comfortable because if he does that, it's a wrap. So you jump on him, don't give him a chance to get adjusted to the new stuff that he's learned. So you jump on him right away and make him go back to what he knows best. And that's what I would do. I'd be like, yo, go go right at him in the first round. Don't don't fill out, fill out in three, three or four. First round, jump dead in his ass. <laughs> I can't have a boxing teacher <laughs> standing right next to me without kind of running through the fights that we see on the horizon. Because, for instance, Davis Garcia is one that everybody's been debating. How do you see that fight shaking out in a few weeks? I'm gonna go with Tank. I think that the opposition and the experience, you know. Tank is good. You know, people see Tank as a puncher, but I, I I watch him, and he's good for setting traps. He can set traps beautiful, and he'll set you up. It's called the overlay for the underplay. You know, he's good for that. You know what I mean? And um, I think that uh, he's going to trick Garcia into something. And yeah. Do you think it's a mistake for Garcia to take this fight? Yeah, you know what? I respect him, man. I mean, um, he could have went another route. 
In all honesty, Ryan Garcia could have went another route. I respect them. I respect both of them for taking the fight against each other. You know, most guys that are undefeated and on a roll like they are, they won't fight each other. Mm. You know, they they have every excuse not not to fight. You know what I mean? But these guys, they're willing to put it on the line, and I like that. And I respect both of them. And that's a fight that I'll pay to go see. Along those lines, the story the last couple of weeks has been Usyk and Fury and that fight not being made. Have you been paying attention to that negotiation or anything at, at all? Not at all. I mean, when Fury said 70-30 and Usyk took the 30, I had more respect for him than ever. I respected him before then, but when he said I'll take the 30%, I respected him even more. But then I just knew, I just had a good feeling the fight wasn't going to come off. Mm. Who do you see as the most dominant heavyweight in the sport right now? The most dominant heavyweight right now? Damn, that's a good question. But, you, I mean, Tyson Fury is beating, everybody, beating the guys that have been put in front of him. But uh, um, So you got to go with him. I mean, there's a lot of up-and-coming guys. There's a lot of guys out there. But right now, I mean, you got to give it to Fury. If that fight were to be made, Usyk and Fury, you call him Fury? Yeah, I just think that uh, Fury's good at using his size to his advantage. And I think personally that he's going to go out there and walk right at Usyk and let him know he's the bigger man and and keep control. But if he doesn't do that, then he's in trouble. But I think he's going to do that, and he's very good at doing it. And lastly, one undisputed fight that did get made, fortunately, and is right on the horizon. We got Lomachenko and Haney. Uh, break that fight down for me. Uh, I got to honestly say I got to go with Haney. I mean, uh, over the last three, four years, he's improved tremendously, tremendously. And uh, I think that uh, I think that right now, the fight at one, at that weight should be Haney and uh, Stevenson. Yeah, <laughs> your lips to God's ears. <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago, Lomachenko, they were talking about him like number one pound for pound, unbeatable. Yeah. Do you think if the fight had happened then, he could have beaten Haney? Is you know, um, to me, you know, boxing is like a learning process. You know what I mean? And over the last few years, Haney has improved tremendously and showed that he belongs. And, uh, you know, some fights you have, I can't remember the guy he fought. He fought a guy, and um, he got hit with a shot and got hurt for a little, a split mm-hmm. second. But that fight right there made him a better fighter. After that fight, he just put his foot on the gas, and boom, has been on the roll and has improved each fight. You know, Loma at the, at the same time has improved and done well. But I just think that right now uh, – Haney is the man right now. Him and uh, Stevenson are the best at 135 right now, I believe. Well, the man tonight that's improving every fight is Zizo. Give me one punch you'd like to to teach him. What are we looking for in the next two or three fights for him to develop? That right hand. We got to work on the right hand. He's getting the jab. Now we got to get the right. He's got the one. Now we got to get the two. There we go. You know what I mean? All right, Radio Raheem on the ones and twos. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> in, that, <laughs> in that order. Coach, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. At the O2 Arena. <laughs>